the only will building building on solid foundation for marriage building a strong foundation for marriage building strong foundation building strong foundation for marriage building strong foundation for marriage number one what is marriage marriage is an institution ordained and ordered by god Marriage is, is, is an institution. It's an institution ordained and ordered by God. That is the only institution that was established before sin came into the world. Marriage is the oldest university in the entire world. The university of marriage was the first thing God did before man fell. And God is the chancellor of this university. So the word connoting that is an institution that should tell you something that is a place of learning. And this is an institution where people don't graduate. They only change levels. If it's an, in every institution, there are different classes and different levels. That is why every marriage is not at the same level. Every marriage has different stages. And that is why we are talking about what is marriage. So that if you are not in a marriage, you can know you are not in one. And if you want to go into it, you know what you are going into. Because many people have different definitions of what they call marriage. But the only person that can define marriage for you is God. Because marriage is God's idea. Now, there are three ways of getting married. Number one, civil marriage. Civil marriage. That is the one that is done in the court. Uh, people are certificate must be acquired from local municipal uh, municipality, and it differs from one nation to the other, where they have a legal registrar, uh, where a legal registrar must be signed by at least two witnesses. That is, in such case, and your parental consent is desirable at this level. Encourage and very much sought after, but that is um, for people that are going into court marriage. Uh, Baby, you are a liar. Amen. Amen. So, Jesus. so, and marriage, this kind of marriage, can only be broken by legal legal means. It's a crime to marry again while still marry under the marriage ordinance. In this kind of thing, if you are married and you go and marry somebody else, they call it baogami. So, you and the law and the police and the rest of them <laughs> you might be doing fellowship after it because you had legal documents to prove what you are talking about. That's why People must know what they are going into. People must open their mind. And not, I am, I am in love, I'm in love. Love Love is blind. Love is not blind. Though. Love sees very well. Because people don't know that God is love. 
many people they are carried away, they don't understand sometimes when they are doing certain things. Uh, this league group, there are people that decide to go through um, um, going to the um, authorities um, to have marriage certificates through the government. That is one way by which people can marry. Number two, you have customary marriage. That is, customary marriage is one that this involves families. Families get together and traditionally hand over their daughter after customary rights are performed. And the right depends on the family and tribes. Some family consider this as a full and proper marriage except the couples live together and they expect the couples to live together thereafter. I did that they call traditional marriage. Uh, traditional marriage is a, is, a marriage, is a point where two families come together and they consider this an engagement. This is when people say, I am engaged. This is an agreement to marry between two families, giving their daughters to you. You got their consent. And this, the, in this, the, the church does not recognize um, this traditional marriage as marriage until the pastor blesses. Because God is the priest of every marriage. He said, God bless them. Genesis 1.28, not and the court bless them. That is the difference. Genesis 128, and God bless them. Not even that their parents bless them. Well, no matter what the parents do, until God bless, that relationship is not in the sight of God recognized by him. Now, that is why we are saying, for people to understand what is called marriage, um, customary marriage, this marriage, uh, the man can marry, in this particular kind of marriage, men marry as many as many women. I mean, people have different kind of culture for this, and the church believes it's important for its members to marry under marriage ordinance because legal marriage under ordinance does not permit polygamy. So, um, for instance, in other in nations, if you have more than one wife, they call it biogamy. That would be against the law. That is doing things legally now. And um, now the third, the third marriage is called spiritual marriage or godly marriage. And this is the one that the, vow, the couples vow to obey God in relation to marriage and also the marriage is sealed by God. Now, in this kind of marriage, the church conduct the vows, uh, bless the couple, um, in this, as as far as the church is concerned, you are not married until this is done. Because Matthew chapter 19 verse 6 says, What God has joined together, let no man put us under. So it's not every marriage that is joined by God. Not every marriage is joined by God. People marry and God is not involved. And I'm going to show you scriptures. And if you don't get God involved, the day when there's going to be a problem, because marriage is God's idea. It's not our idea. Marriage cannot succeed as it should when God is not involved. Because there are spiritual influences that marriage attracts. Because God is the author of marriage. And that is why you see some churches, they put it there, they publish uh, all the couples getting married on notice but for three weeks. So that there's any objection to the marriage, let anybody voice it out. Some people, they will put on their announcement, um, Mr. A and Mr. B are going to marry next month. If anybody has anything against it, please let us know. Perhaps the person has been talking to three people inside the church. He spoke to Lady A, he spoke to Lady J, he spoke to Lady K, all of them in the same church, and they are not aware. So we have so different churches put up different kind of stuff, but the point I'm making here is that God is the corner of every, is the foundation of every successful marriage. God is the priest of every successful marriage, so that is why we are saying what we are saying. 
Yeah, because God is the one that ordained marriage because he was physically involved in it. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. You see, God was practically, in fact, that is the only thing God came down to come and do. If you look at the ordinance of marriage, that was the only thing God came down to do. Genesis chapter 2. I want to see action here. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. From verse 21, Genesis 2, 21, 22, you will see God in action here. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed it, and closed up the flesh in his place. Verse 21, God took one of the ribs. So how can God take one of the ribs when he's not there? God had to come down, put Adam to sleep, and remove the rib on the body of Adam. In other words, Adam was a man that was full of authority. Adam never knew that he needed anybody. It was God that saw it. Genesis 2 Genesis 2.18 And God saw that it's not good for man to be alone. Adam did see it. Adam was walking in full authority because it was two people inside him. Adam had the Eve. Everything that would make Eve was inside him. So he was not even aware that somebody was inside him. So God brought Eve out of Adam. That is to let you know there is more to what the eyes can see in people. Adam was not aware what he was looking for was inside him. Out of Adam, God made the woman. That's why when Adam woke up and saw and said, wow. He just said, wow, man. And that's why he became woman. woman you know? So, not only that, <laughs> man was... Um, he saw that this one is a man, but a, a womb man. That's why they call it woman. Because he's a womb, he's a, womb, he's a man, but a womb, a man with a womb. So to join womb man to shorten womb, womb man, they call it woman for good English pronunciation. So what are we saying? Just to make it easy for English. They say because if you're going to say, womb man, come. Womb man, can you gather here? Oh, womb, womb, oh, womb man, way behind. I need one womb, one womb man. I think English did not agree together. They decided to call it woman. So, so to let you know that, what are we saying there for years that God was physically involved. The physicality of God's involvement tells you God's interest. So marriage has spiritual undertone. The book that when they marry, everything just start going well for them. I'm talking of when they marry correctly, when they marry rightly. So, and when it is not, when things are wrong in the foundation, also you see a lot of things go wrong in the in the relationship, and that will affect a lot of people. Now, God is the principal factor. When it comes to marriage, God must be involved. And if God must be involved, you have to put God at the foundation. You can't do it the way you want. You do it the way he wants. You can't marry on your terms. You marry on his terms. If you want God to be involved, he has his own rules on how you must do it for him to be involved. And that is why it's very, very important for him to understand what marriage is. The coming together of a man and a woman under God's, God's involvement. That is what the Bible says for this course, Genesis 2.24.
For this culturally man, leave his father and mother, not a boy. A lot of boys are the ones leaving father and mother to go and marry now. That's, it's a high level of immaturity because the person that was getting married is still a, is somebody physically is 27, sometimes is 28, is even 30, but is a baby. He's still a boy. For this cause shall a man. It's not an issue of how much bears you have or mustache you have that determine a man. It's maturity that shows a man. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. For this cause, for this, so there's a cause for marriage. There must be a cause. No, there must be a reason. That is Genesis 2 24. So don't just marry for marrying's sake. Marriage must have a cause. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to one, they shall become one flesh. And see that one flesh, people thought it's just microwave. They did a word that did just become one flesh. Practically speaking, he said that way, but that one flesh is not a destination, it's a journey that will bring two people to become one flesh. There are many theories that talk about that one flesh. And the Bible says that both of them were naked and they were not ashamed. What does that mean? Transparency. No hiding anything. Not that the, guy, the man has or the, the woman has children, about two children, I didn't tell the man, and they end up in marriage. That is, that is going to be chaos, because there was no transparency between the two parties. There has to be transparency. You can see, God laid the foundation. Everything is transparent. Nothing is missing. There is nothing that the spouse coming to come and discover after five years and say, what? You mean you have a child somewhere? Uh, but you did not tell me. He said, we are afraid. You did. I don't think I should have told you. Really? And we are going to get married? That simple thing can scatter the marriage. Very, marriage is so very, very, um, um, very sensitive. That There are things you have to put in the foundation that shouldn't be on the roof. The only thing that starts from, from the roof is a grave. Only the grave start from the top. Every marriage must have a foundation. Marriage does not start with roofing. It starts with foundation. Number one foundation is God must be involved in what you are doing. And if you want God to be involved, you have to follow his rule of doing it. That is why uh, I'm saying here uh, today, so what is marriage? That's why I'm saying what is marriage because God, uh, if you see Ma, 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 Malachi chapter 2, let me show you something here. Malachi chapter 2. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Shaka tapa kota kate prokoso uroboya. Now, I'm teaching this thing. I believe that a lot of things, a lot of people will need this class. A lot of people are going to need it beyond this class. So that's why we are recording it. So, um, Malachi chapter 2, verse 14. Then Matthew chapter 19, uh, verse 5. I'll tell us uh, from verse 4 to 6. I need to say all these things to lay foundation. To lay solid German foundation. If you don't, if this was not how your relationship began, then there's need to be a very serious adjustment so that things does not fall apart. So you will not be building a, a, a marriage of 10 stories on the foundation of a bungalow. I come again. So you'll not be building 
a marriage um, of 10 story building and your foundation is just that of a bungalow bungalow means that is a house that doesn't have a staircase it's only floor you don't have any any decking the foundation is very very small and you are building on it 10 story building you don't need prophets to tell you that that building is coming down just let hurricane katrina come to town uh, hurricane katrina or hurricane andrew or hurricane uh, john or hurricane uh, uh, christopher just let them come to town that building or that building because every relationship will go to their turbulence this is where you need foundation that's why you need solid foundation there's no marriage uh, that you are going to have that won't be at one point wind blowing and all those things a foundation that keep marriages when things are tough what do i mean now that is just add all the scriptures together matthew 19 4 to 6 malachi chapter 2 verse 14 and 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 then matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 26 I would liken a wise man to a man that built his house upon the rock. And the wind blew upon it and the storm came upon it. Wind will come on your marriage. It's not a matter of when. It's a matter of if. It's a matter of, if, it's a matter of when it will come. It's not a... Uh, uh, it's, time will come. <laughs> that is why foundation is needed. And let me take those videos one by one. Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. Mm. Malachi chapter 2. Because so many people only know Malachi for tight. <laughs> yeah, Sharon. I'm, sh I'm sorry. I was just trying to get your attention. You you don't have it record. Oh, it just, I see it now. All right. That's okay. Okay. Your question I answered now. Is your question answered? Yes, Pastor. I answered. Okay. Malachi 2.14. He said, for this reason, uh, God said here yeah, in verse 13, from verse 13, Malachi 2.13. Let's read from verse 13. Malachi 2.13. He said, for this second thing you did, you covered the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. And it, the altar of Lord with tears. Yes, that is Malachi 2, 2, and 13. Out uh -huh. And so much that he regardeth not the offering For, anymore. Uh -huh. Or receive it with goodwill at your hand. Uh -huh. 14. Now wait. He say, wait, just wait. That is what part of what lack of proper marriage, this is what it affects. Marriage affects offering, affects prayer, affects things spiritually. Then number 14, for he said, Yet ye, yet ye say, For that therefore, reason, Because the Lord have been witness between thee and Go ahead. Okay. We can't hear Sharon. Is everybody, is everybody hearing me? Is everybody hearing me? Uh, is everybody hearing me? We were here. Okay. Was it freezed? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what is freezing this class. The, the devil is very angry. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. He's a liar. But there's nothing he's going to do. It's like uh, saying that a, a, a sheep was angry with a lion. There is nothing that Zanoya is going to do. It's like uh, a sheep. They go and tell the lion I'm very angry with him. <laughs> the lion will win every time. <laughs> so the lion will just say, thank you for getting angry with me. You all wait for me and come here. When I finish, I'm coming for you. The Lord, thank you for getting angry with me. You are you are the one God used to answer my prayer today. At least I've been praying for food. Thank you for coming. <laughs> You are my you are my food today. Thank you. Stay there. Wait for me. I'm coming. Be angry. Wait for me. <laughs> so now, hear what he said. Yeah, 
These are the things you do when you alter a prayer. Your alter a prayer is affected because of how you are, your marital state, your marital situation is affecting your prayers, affecting things. Verse 14, Sharon, are you still there? It says, Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord have been witness between thee Did and been, thy wife of yes, thy youth. Yes. Against whom thou hast dealt Dead treacherously. Yes. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. You can see that. Go make it clear there. That Malachi 2.14. Yet, for this reason, because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth. So, every marriage that is a godly marriage, God at the beginning must be a witness between both of you. This is where many people just meet each other. I love you on Monday. I kiss you on Tuesday. We, we are together in the same bedroom on Wednesday. That's why on the following day, I'm angry with you on Friday, the end of being divorced. But God is not involved in nothing. I love you, I love you, I love you. Say love is very blind. I just love you. I just love you. Say, sit down, let's teach you about this thing. Marriage is not for it's not for children. It's not born out of feeling. It's, it's a conscious thing you enter into, understanding what you are doing. He said, God has been a witness between me and you. So when many people say, it's not every marriage that God has joined. Because there are many marriages that God is not involved. God was not a winner between them. And the Bible says here, know that that woman, she's a wife of your youth. That the wife of your youth, the wife of your covenant. This to let that marriage is not a feeling. Marriage is covenant. These are understanding you must have. Marriage is not done out of contract. Marriage is done by covenant. These are things before anybody say, I love you, I love you, I want to marry you. You must understand this. It's not boyfriend, girlfriend. It's not I love you on Monday, I'm not I'm angry on Tuesday, we go apart on Wednesday. That's not marriage. That can be your relationship. If you want God to be involved, God must be the witness from foundation before you start doing anything at top of each other. God must be involved. He said, I I may witness. I have to be a witness between you and your wife. And the wife of your covenant. Many people are, in, are married and they don't even understand what marriage is about. Marriage is not coexistence. Marriage is not, I just love him, Pastor. I can't sleep without him, Pastor. You know, I just love him. Amen. That is not what the marriage is not a contract. Marriage is more than a contract, marriage is a covenant. So, I'm wanting those that are younger people that are listening or be listening to us to understand. Every lady going into marriage or man must know this thing I'm going to, it is a covenant. Because a time will come that you will say, you know, Pastor, I don't have a feeling for him any longer. That is why it's a covenant. Marriage is not based on feeling. When, if your feeling change, covenant does not change. These are things people must understand before they even go near anything because say, eh, I want to go to church, I want to marry you. And that's why there's so much breaking of marriages today all over the whole place. Because many people have wrong foundations. They don't even understand what they are talking about. It's like somebody just got a right now and say, COVID-19, COVID-19, or oh, a lot of aircraft are parked at the airport. I must drive one. I must just enter. Open one for me. After all of them are back now, I must fly the airplane today. Ah. <laughs> uh, they should go and call friend director for you. Friend director, you should go and call them already. Your, your dead body is about to go it about. Because you want to go and enter what you don't know what you're anything about. In the Bible days, before they marry, before you say I want to marry anybody, they will cut your finger. This this third one where ring enter. They will cut it with knife. Where ring is today is where blood is. Because the blood that was on the fourth finger comes from the heart. That is what was going to happen between Joseph and, Ma and Mary. He said, I'm in courtesy with you and you have a child. Uh, how come uh, uh, that you have a child by Holy Spirit? Me, I don't understand this kind of Holy Spirit too. Holy Spirit pregnant you. 
<laughs> at that time it was very strange. So she went. He went to sleep in his mind, and the Lord appeared to him and said, "I am the one in. Rest. I am the one in this one matter. Your wife is still a virgin. Nothing, nothing happened to her. I needed your wife body to carry my son, but I wanted to be there as a cover for her." And he agreed. The Bible said that he wanted to privately leave her and walk away. Because they were they have been betrothed to each other. Already they have they are just about to cut the fourth finger. They will cut the middle. Blood will come out. So in those Bible days, before they cut your hand and, and blood come out, you must know what you are going into. <laughs> they can't carry knife now and cut the fourth finger and blood come out. The one we can say, now nah, I changed my mind, you know, I don't laugh him again. <laughs> you can't talk that kind of thing. That's why it is not a place to get with ring. That ring is a sign of covenant. Many people don't even know what is marriage. Marriage is something both of you see that they take you through, they take you through proper counseling after courtship. That is what I'm calling what they call marriage. So there are a lot of marriages that doesn't have a solid foundation. Because no matter whether you marry in the White House or you marry in Downing Street, marriage has their day when the storm will come. Matthew chapter 7. Don't follow me here. Matthew 7 verse 24. Every marriage will be tested. So these are the things why people may have to understand when somebody says I want to marry, I say no problem, sit down first. Let's talk that you know what you are going into. Now he said Matthew 7, verse 20, verse 24. He said here, uh, um, you liken a man, the, you want to say, we of mine, can we like the man that built his house upon the rock? Verse 23. House built on the rock. This marriage built on the rock. The rock is the revelation of God's word. The rock of understanding that marriage is a covenant. It's not a feeling. So before you enter into it, I'm angry with you on Monday. doesn't change on Tuesday. Oh. Now, see what happened here. I said, and the rain descended. A, a, a wise man built his head upon the rock. The rain descend. Flood came. The wind blew and beat upon the house. And it did not fall. For what reason? It was founded on the rock. So, see the other or the other marriage. And he said here, yeah, everyone who hears this of mine and does not do them, they don't have regard for God's principle. Will be like a foolish man who build his marriage upon the sand. The rain descend, the flood came. And the wind blew and beat against the house, and it fell. Great was the fall. Both of them are building, but they are building on different foundation. What kind of foundation is your marriage or relationship built on? Is what determines its ability to survive during time of crisis. Both, ha both houses, they had the same attack. Both marriages had the same attack. The wind, the rain descend. The flood came. The wind blew. Those three things. Every marriage will be tested. It is the foundation that both of you has built in your mind is what determines your survivor in the time of attack. That's, and you see, that's why you see the West. The West, where we are in right now, the Western world, the divorce is so much because many homes are not built on solid foundation. Many homes are built on sand. They are built on sand of feeling. I just love him, Pastor. I met so and so on Monday. I can't take my eyes off him. I can't take my eyes off her. Uh, you know, since I met him, I cannot eat. Oh, I love you, Pastor. Oh, yeah. it, this love, oh, yeah. you know, I cannot even sleep. <laughs> so, it says, so, 
Uh, so what do you want to do? He said, I want to marry. He said, really? <laughs> uh, sit down first. If you sit down. If it's marriage you are talking about, sit down. <laughs> uh, that love that you are telling me that, you know, I just love him, I just love him. And this love is so blind, has blinded your mind and blinded your emotion. <laughs> you are a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> I tell people, look, it's just like somebody carrying a, a key of a car. I said, I love this car, Pastor. I want you to drive this car. Do you know how to drive? No. I want you to drive this car. Have you gone to driving school? No, I want this, this car. I want to drive it. drive it. Do you know how to drive? That is what marriage is. <laughs> Many people enter into a car and they don't understand what they are doing with themselves. And many people know what I'm teaching with, with you teaching you now many many years ago their journey will have been a bit different now and i'm teaching this thing not for all of you that are in this class alone i'm teaching it for those that will hear me after now i tell them go and listen to that class first don't join the cat don't join the catalog of broken marriages that is plague the western world today so many many broken relationships and you can't certain relationship certain brokenness is coming out of foundation some people they are not in a marriage they didn't marry i'm talking of by god standard because they just met each other uh, they slept with each other and pregnant and that's how they start staying together that one is not marriage we call it co co codependency or, or both of you you are doing loving jaitis and so you just met each other, no foundation, God is not involved, God was not brought in, God was not in that foundation. He said, What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Asunder spirit will test every marriage. It's only the God factor that stops it. What God has joined, what God has glued, let no man. If the one that God glued, man still want to remove it. Talk less of the one that God did not join. That's why we are we advise couples if they didn't do it right, there's always a right way to do it. There's always doing it well. There's always the God we serve does not leave us without a way out of dealing with problems. So some they met each other when they were not born again and they were carrying on with themselves. It's okay. Or maybe that being the say of your marriage is okay. That we call what is that's what they call marriage blessing. If you didn't do it the right way, it's never late to do it the right way. It's never late. But both of you must sit down. Both of you must sit down and learn things you need to learn. So that to change your mentality. That this lady I want to marry, this is not just a girlfriend. This is going to be a wife of a covenant. If you are not ready for a covenant, don't die it. Just stay out of it. It better you just remain. And that's why we have so many baby mama around the whole place today. Ladies having children for different um, women, women having um, babies for different men. You become baby mama for everybody. You have children with three fathers. Because you didn't have proper foundation at the beginning. But let me say no matter how it is. It's never late to do things right. If you are going to a place and you discover that where you are going is a wrong path, the best is to turn back. There is no, it's never late to be right, but this thing involves two people. Both of you must come down and sit down. If you know you want to marry, tell yourself truth because storm will come. Marriages have their season. Just like we have winter, we have summer, we have autumn and we have uh, the third one uh, summer, winter, uh, autumn. Oh, huh? Oh, F A L L. Uh huh. Summer, winter, spring, and fall. Uh huh. You have said it. The spring. Uh -huh. Spring, uh, spring, summer, winter. So, can you imagine somebody now in. <laughs> Wearing t-shirt, 
in December. <laughs> he's wearing he's wearing t-shirt during winter. They will tell him that, excuse me, are you aware which part of the world are you staying? Did you come from Jamaica to this place? I mean, how did you the, uh, do you know that there's cold outside or wearing singlets? Like today, now the weather is very good. <laughs> Some people have removed their shirt and removed all their t-shirt. They are just walking bare body. That is only in some of people do that. Uh, nobody, no matter how many, no matter when somebody says that you have mental health problem, uh, you can't just take off all your dress as a man and walk out bare chest and say you want to enjoy fresh air. Nobody does that during winter. That was what people are doing. That what I'm saying. What is marriage? Many people don't know what they call marriage, so they just jump inside it. Because many people's ideology about marriage is taught by Hollywood. Only where I love you, not just love you. The people that are teaching you marriage in Hollywood, they said they slept, they woke up, this lipstick is still in their mouth. <laughs> go and ask all the women. Nobody sleep with lipstick. They clean it before they go to bed. That's to tell you the fakeness of Hollywood and Hollywood. That's why majority of people you want to learn marriage from. They don't have a home. There's only marriage on set they know how to do. Many of them has no marriage. And that is why I'm talking to straight talk to many of us. What is marriage? Marriage is the coming together of a man, not a boy. There are so many boys in marriage. And there are so many girls that you sleep in their father's house to learn how to be a woman. Because many people have mistaken their physical body, meaning to equal maturity for marriage. For this social a man must mentally be matured, responsible, have your own house, have your own place where you stay. Not that you marry a woman and you go and move into a house because you saw a baby mama or sugar mommy or sugar daddy. That is not marriage. That is just codependency. So, you have your own house. Like I've always told somebody that wanted to marry that time, I said, you will love that lady. You love him, okay. That girl, you must not move into that lady's house. Go and get your own house. Get your house and let her move into your house. That's how men does. Men, not boys. It's boys that move to the house of a woman. And if it ever happen, if in case it ever happen, as a man, what you do, you take over responsibility of the house. And that should be for a short time. And okay, if I'm here, we are here for this but for a short time. We, I'm working to get my own house, but to show my responsibility, I'm paying the bill of this house. That's how a man talk. Not a, hey, I'm very happy, you know. The lady has her own house. Hallelujah. She has her own car. Hey, man. I'm so blessed. She has, she pay all the bills, man. And she she just feed me on top. Oh, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> I'm sorry for you. You are not seen husband yet. <laughs> so you pay. You, 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 a man coming to your house and eat your food. <laughs> then you pay the bills. He's eating. You put food in his front. And he opens his mouth and say, baby. I just love you. Why won't he love you now? See, you are Mother Christmas. You are Mama Christmas. You are Mama Christmas. You are the new Mama Christmas in town. That pay bills. That is why say love. You can't say you love somebody. People have mistaken love. Love, God is love. God, love is not uh, emotion. Love is a choice. A conscious choice you make. I want to make life better for this person. The Bible says two is better than one. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Two is better than one. If you marry somebody, you must make their life better. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If one for one will lift him up. One turned as a loan. So, so that you don't want to help him. So, so again, if two work that they will keep warm. How can two warm except they be alone? What about all of you is this? Now is this. What am I saying to all of you is this? That when you marry somebody, Ecclesiastes 4, 9, you are to make their life better. If a lady already has a, a job, she has her own car, she's doing well for herself. If you marry that girl, 
life should be better for that girl thereafter. So when you say, I want to marry you, what are you saying? You are saying, I want to make life better for you. But can you make life better for a lady that you moved into her house? Even if you move into her house, you must have, sit down to talk over how will you pay this bill? How much do you pay for rent? Okay, this is what I earn per month. Till I get my house and get out of here, we move to another place, I'll be paying the bill of this house. That is how a man does, not a boy. So many boys in town that want to marry. Just moved about by emotion and lust. They are not driven by sex. That's all. You want to have sex. That's all. A man that want to marry must accept responsibility. And you have so many irresponsible men out there that they want to marry. And so many girls that also does not reason. They are in love. Because love has blinded their mind. That's not love. It's lost. Marriage is not for boys. It requires it require much. That's why you see today, marriage is breaking like biscuit. Because the marriage is between two boys, boys and girl. And when they are boys and girl, they are not in the home, they are in the hostel. I can tell you that one. That's no marriage, it's hostel. That's why they are hiding bread from each other. One will hide biscuit here, another one hide bread here. Then where they hide the bread, rat will go there and eat the bread. So, because hiding the bread from the wife. And where you hide the biscuit somewhere. Where you hide the biscuit, the rat locate the biscuit there. And to the time he climb to go and carry the biscuit, the rat has gone there to go and eat it. He said, ah, who ate my biscuit here? Because he's a boy. <laughs> it's a boy. Boy got married. And there are so many boys. <laughs> I see coming on Facebook to come out to a lot of boys that are married. There are no men. They are boys. A lot of boys that have mustache at the age of 50. Because they didn't learn what is called marriage. And it's never late to learn it. We want to speak to our men. We want to speak manhood into boys. And speak maturity into girls. And let somebody want to marry you ask him, number one, where are you working? I'm still looking for a job. You say, oh, really? Okay. You are looking for a job and you want to marry me? Okay, I see. I am, I am, I have a job I am doing right now and when you get job you can come and you can check out if i'm still available <laughs> but uh, an unmarried man to come and talk to me about marriage i don't think but if you know where you are going is different what i mean to say that you must know where you are going you must have a vision you must have a course they, they, you must have a course there are people that maybe they have not gotten a job as i time when they are talking to you but you can know there's a vision they, because god gave adam a job before he gave me a wife that's what i'm saying so god gave adam Job before he gave him the garden of Eden before he gave him wife. What are we saying? Therefore, remember, I said to you, Matthew chapter 19. You need, I want to make sure this compre this understanding is comprehensive. This teaching, everybody will hear it, will play it, other people can listen to it. And what is called marriage. <laughs> so if you don't know, you don't enter. If you if you rush into it, I promise you they will rush you out like Russia has. You jam there, you will jam like German if you are not properly know what you are doing. Now, uh, now let's Matthew twenty, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter nineteen. It says, um, it said it here, Matthew chapter nineteen, from verse four. He said to them, "Have you not read that he made them at the beginning, male and female?" And he said, verse five. Matthew 19 verse 5. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two will become one flesh. For this reason, for this cause, there must be a reason for your marriage. There must be a cause. Don't just marry a man or a man just marry a woman. There must be a reason. There must be an assignment. There must be something that the lady is coming to do. They call women and help me. But how can she come and help you to do something? How can she come and help you when you are doing nothing? 
And that's where many the, the woman come into the marriage, and the woman is trying to uh, pursue a career, and the man become jealous because the man is not doing anything. There's nothing that makes me to be jealous in my wife now. Jealous now for what? Do I have the time to even look at one? She's busy with her own thing and busy with what I'm doing. What I'm trying to say is that our coming together is for a purpose. There is a mandate on my own life. So when she met me, she met me with a vision, with a course. And my course was already set where I am going. And I am told that this is where I am going. I'll be going into full-time ministry. God is calling me into ministry. Even though I have my area of training as a microbiologist, but God is calling me to ministry. And I, God, I'm, 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 I'm talking to you because I want to marry you. But now, in our togetherness, every assignment requires assistance. So you are coming on board with me to pursue this course. So it's clear. Not that uh, she just get to know later. Mm -mm. Before Jack Robinson, anything. Everything was clear from day one. So, is you see, in my own case, after we spoke, after about one week, I took her to the place I was staying, to another part of Nigeria. I told her, I said, can I see you? She said, we came. She sat down, I said, I want to show you the room where I am staying. This room, I am staying, they borrowed me this room. Um, I have, the only thing I have here is my... Is my bags, my is my college. That bag, the 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 belt of the bag has fallen, so I use rope to tie it. Has brought out the bag with rope. I see this. I open the bag. I say, this bag is all the thing I have. Even on the earth right now. So this all I have. This room is not my own. They borrow me. Why I'm still staying here? Because I'm getting a job. I just arrived in town anyway. I just arrived. Maybe one week, two weeks. But this is a place where I've served there as a president of all the other graduates. We call them coppers. I was in charge of the state for the, for the state, for the entire country, entire state for a, a whole year. But the Lord told me to go back to that city for ministry. That is 1994. The Lord told me then, go back to that same city where you are a president of the coppers. That is the place where I have for you, where I'm going to enter the ministry from. So I told her this is what I came here to come and do. But I show her my bag. So this is what I have. This bag, this is all I have. He says, is this all you have? I say, yeah, that's what I have. Do you still want to marry this man? Because I told her the vision that I have, and I told her this is what I have. It was a bag that is tied with the bag. That rope was a green rope so that the bag will not fall apart. But today, is it bag I want to count now? After 24 years of marriage. Is it bags I want to come to house? That story has changed because we did not marry because of things. We married for a cause. We married for a purpose. There is a reason why we came together. We didn't come together because I have cow. I came there because she could see a vision. She could see I'm going somewhere. She could see me doing something. That is what they call marriage. Many people have no reason why they are coming together. It's just, I just love you. I love you. Ah! I cannot sleep. That is all they are married. Just marry on emotion. 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 Boys and girls are going out. That is what you call it. That is why the marriage will not last. Because the devil is always angry with any marriage. Number two. Lesson two now. Are you still following me? <laughs> is somebody yelling me so far? Yes. Yes, sir. I want to be sure that um, everybody is listening to me because I'm only, you see, I'm speaking, I'm doing two things tonight. And I want to get all of your attention. I'm speaking to you and I'm speaking through you. All of you, I'm speaking to you and I'm speaking through you. 
Because many of you here, you are moms and dads. So you can speak to our next generation. You can speak to your boys. You can speak to your girls. What marriage is and what marriage is not. So that they don't have to the mortuary of marriage and marital accident we have. We have enough A and E. Enough treatment going right now in A and E. Marital A and E. With broken leg and broken head for marriage. We don't want to add to it. We want to reduce the rate. So all of you on this line, I'm speaking to you and I will be speaking to you, to other people. And everyone have been listening to this teaching. I'm, I'm very, very, this teaching is still going, I'm not going to post it to, to that platform. I'm speaking very, very intentionally in this class. So that we can help to correct foundations of some other people. And let me say this to you. you anybody may have made mistake. That's not a problem. It's never late to do what is right. You can always get it right and say, okay, I didn't do it right the last time. I didn't do it correctly. Or maybe you are now on your own. Next time, I will not do it wrongly. I will make sure this is understood. Get this teaching to be sent. You, re, you, re, you, you rehear it. Marriage is not a feeling. Marriage is a covenant. Anybody want to marry, sit them down. Let them understand where where. It's not that uh, I, I love you on Monday. You know, you know, I don't like you again on Tuesday. Look, <coughs> it is not for boys. That is why many homes scatter, set and break into pieces. Because there's no foundation. You want to go into anything right now, it's never late to be right. Because marriage involves two people. You can't marry, you can't marry yourself. It involves two people. If anybody wants to get married, you don't know what to tell them, take this teaching, tell them both of you sit down and listen to it first. Both of you listen. And say, did you hear what they said? I told my wife, I said, look, wait, madam, do you say you want to marry me? She said, yes. I said, sit down first, sit down. I said, now, look at this bag, small bag I have. This is all the thing I have. Oh. <laughs> what I have is vision. I have purpose. I have a cause for which I'm living for. For this cause shall the man leave his father. So before you can become a man, you must have a cause. So if somebody wants to marry your daughter, sit them down and say, eh, Mr. Man, sit down. So what is your plan in life? You know, no, I just, uh, no, no. I just have a plan, but you know, I just want to marry your daughter first. Mm, wait, before you marry my daughter, I'm bring her inside chain. What is your purpose for life first? What do you, what do you want to do? What are you doing that my daughter will need to come and help you with? Because that is the problem many marriage right now. The man has no vision. He has no way he's going. He has no plan. He has nothing. He just one, 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 uh, one person that was roaming about the street. I want to carry your own daughter you have invested into. Ah, no. No way. I told my daughter, princess, I told her, I said, well, anybody want to marry you, they have to deal with me anyway. So I will sit them down <laughs> because I'm making investment into you. I can't lose my investment. Uh, so sit down, Mr. Man. How are you doing? Fine. You want to marry my daughter? Praise God. Sit down. Let's talk. I want to know where you are taking her to. Anything that affects your children will affect you. Don't turn blind eyes. Don't say, Pastor. I just they just laugh each other. Hey. <laughs> Uh, when they start beating each other, they will call you. So you better sit them down. What are you doing? Where are you going? It's never late to do what is right. Please, people can make mistake. When mistakes are made, they're already made. You can't do anything about that, but you can you can correct the future. You can correct the future. Oh, maybe under you are. Charge for somebody does not mean you must marry them. It's not by force. 
It may be just happen out of mistake. Okay, that is done. But now, don't tell me mistake, first child. Then, other mistake, second child. Is it mistake, third child? <laughs> that is no longer mistake. That is foolish. That is www.foolishness.com. I understand. Uh, first child, oh, I understand that one. Okay, it's a mistake. They after understanding this kind of teaching, then the same person that pregnant you, she pregnant you again. And maybe Satan has tied your head. That's why. So, we can, we can make mistake, But don't make these mistakes second times, third time, fourth time, fifth time. You now have the fifth child with the baby. Somebody was going out with somebody and I was telling the person, I said, I'm warning, I said, this thing you are doing with this lady, the way, I don't think both of you understand what you are doing. If this lady has another child for you, second baby, third baby, and you are telling me that, Pastor, you know, um, I, I'm still thinking about it. You are still thinking about it and you are pregnant here. Uh, I'm saying this so that parents can hear me. Because when they mess up with your daughter or your son, they will leave you with the consequences. You'll be the one carrying the baby. There can be a mistake, yes, first time. But with the same person, second time. With the same person, third time. And they're not married. Don't allow that. Don't let anybody waste the life of your children. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here right now. There can be mistakes. I understand that. But those mistakes must not repeat themselves for the next 10 years. But even at that, it's never late to do what is right. Is somebody getting my point in this class? Let's help our children. Some of us may be on this line you don't have plan to marry. You have reached your final year in this school of marriage. Because marriage is an institution. You are not marrying again. You are a grandmother now. It's okay. But please help your children. Please help the young coming up. Let's speak truth. Because many of this, what I'm telling you right now, is not the common truth outside. Many people don't say truth to their children and train them, and talk to them, and let them know, life is not um, roses. I tell my kids, life is not the way you see it outside the wall of this household. Because you have, I am not, you, it's not me you are going to meet outside. The world, outside the world, there is a wicked world. So I'm t training you, I'm talking to you, if you don't want to hear me, you will hear by the trouble you face when you get outside there. Life will teach you university. So, that is why I'm saying this truth to us. Number two on this lesson is what I call Satan's interest in marriage. Satan's interest in marriage. So that you will know what you are going into. Myself and my wife, we did courtship for we did cost you for about a very short day, so one year, nine months. Or short days. Because so many people don't even do courtship at all. So not, these are the things people need to do, what is called pre premarital stage. And maybe let me talk about that before I go into certain interest. Number two. Let me talk about premarital stage. Number two. I've told you what is marriage now. Lesson two is called the premarital stage of marriage. Let me talk to you about that. The premarital stage of marriage. What I said is number one in what is marriage. That is why you need to have understanding. Understanding. Before you tell somebody that you are going to marry them. A broken courtship is better than a broken marriage. Number two is pre-marital stage. It's called courtship. Courtship is 
a a pre the relationship between a single um a single lady and a single man that's intention to marry each other the courtship stages understanding stage i want to understand you and that is one thing i want to say in marriage when you marry somebody you want to marry number three first thing you must establish no sex i taught you i kiss you i hug you mm. for courtship no why am i saying that ecclesiastes 2 verse 9 courtship is not sex no 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 establish the reason why you are together number one number two it has to be safe from day one so the man will not be calling you that i want us to pray for our wedding 11 in the night we are going to do all night you want to do all night with a lady that you want to marry it's not the right thing to do no no because you are not a stick you'll be tempted that prayer is a sin prayer. You are going to pray. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 9. I read it for you. Establish boundaries in courtship. I told my wife during the first two days we met, I said, in this relationship, there is no sex before marriage. And I told her, if it ever happens, I will not marry you. Just get write that today. Write it down. If a sex happen between me and you, I will not marry you. Get that clear now. Until we are proclaimed, blessed, married properly. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Women have more control than the men. Don't let it happen, no. I told her. It happens that after that event is bye bye. So that how to establish boundaries. Uh, Ecclesiastes two verse nine. The Bible says that Ecclesiastes chapter two. Uh, I want to read something here. I said I charge you by the. Oh, Song of Solomon. Sorry, let me check. I'm coming. Let me check something here. Yeah, Song of Solomon chapter 2, sorry. Song of Solomon. I'm coming. I want to make sure I get the scripture. So that everything I'm telling you, I give you scripture for it. Anything you don't understand, please raise up your hand and I will repeat it. Song of Solomon chapter 8 verse 4, sorry. Song of Solomon chapter 8 verse 4. Can someone, he says here, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do you not stir up or awake love unto it, please? That's in your Bible? Yes. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon 8, verse 4. Do you not stir up love unto it? In other words, don't do anything that will steer up each other. You are holding the hand of your fiancé and your body temperature is already changing. Just remove your hand. Just remove it to save yourself. Because don't steer up yourself. That's why I tell people, you are cutting, then you are kissing each other. Oh, hey. You are looking for trouble. Stay away from this. You know why? Emotions affect decisions. 
emotion affect decisions. The good that are married today, not because they want to marry that person. They marry that person because they had sexual relationship and she became pregnant and it's like a marriage forced on that person. And she be you are you are you already uh, because you, you are, I'm pregnant already for you now. And since I'm pregnant for you, you have to marry me. And some people, some women, use that as a trap for the men. They make sure the guys sleep with them so they can marry them. Don't play that foolishness with anybody. And that you have a child with somebody out of mistake doesn't mean that you have to end up in marriage in that person. Marriage is even from childbearing. You have to sit down and talk. Because this is your life. This is your life. You don't have two lives to live, only one. So in courtship, don't stir up love. You are kissing each other. You lock the door. You say you are doing prayer. Okay, I see. The result of your prayer, we are not going to see it. So, uh, you are doing prayer, B. Okay. Everybody will soon hear the prayer, the answer to that prayer. Uh, you say you are doing all night prayer. Okay, I hear. Um, everybody that was not there, they will soon hear the result of your prayer very soon. So, don't stir up love. Don't be hugging somebody and telling me, Pastor, you know, it's my fiancé. Now, that is courtship. Put foundation from day one. No kissing, no romance, no of those things in courtship. Love is not feeling. Love is choice. If I love you, I will wait for you. If I love you, I'll protect you. If I love you, I will guard you with godly fear. So when you are, when you take sex out of the matter, then you can sit down and talk about your future. Talk about your future. Sit down and talk. Courtship is two people. Courtship is time of fellowship together. Sit down and talk about talk about your life. Tell me about you. How is your family? Know about the family you are marrying from. Because some of you, you don't know the people you are marrying from. That family you want to marry into. Hey, hey. Trouble there, there. Trouble in there, there. You better sit down and find out. Some families, marriage does not last in that family. Marriage, the, none of nobody in that entire family has a home. Know the home you are going into. Every house you are going to, I will show you something now right now. Second Samuel chapter 3. That was it. I'm talking to all of you. I'm talking to some of you. I'm talking to you and I'm talking to you. Second Samuel chapter 3. It says, Second Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. And the house of David grew stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. When you are married to a family house, when you are married, you are married to a house. For instance, if somebody from the house of David goes to marry somebody from the house of Saul, you know what has happened there? A house that is stronger and stronger has gone to marry a house that is weaker and weaker. Anybody you are marrying, you are marrying from a house. Find that what is in that house. Some house, some families, you find that from your spouse you want to marry. Sit down and talk. Tell me about yourself. Courtship is not a time for kissing and romancing. It's, it's I mean, this is why you are getting this coaching right now. It's not a time for kissing each other and learning different sexual style and positions. That is not what courtship is meant for. It's to sit down and talk whether your choice 
prove your choice whether this is God or not. And you will find out, including blood test. Who is doing this now? What's up, man? Who is tampering with this this, this recording? Oh. We are talking about Second Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. The kind of a house you marry into matters. Some people are marrying to a weak house. You must know the house you are marrying from. You must discern that. You must know the house you are marrying from. Before you go into marriage with anybody. Discuss with them. Sit down with them and talk. Find out their family. Let them tell you about their history. Know the kind of house where you are coming from. I think you should be coming back here. But what is the reason for all this now? So what is the reason for this, Sister Anna? What is this? Uh, what is all this? Uh, um, what is going on now? I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, my God and my Father. Because we are doing recording here. Now, hear me. Everybody, I want to marry. You are married to a house. You are married to a house. Courtship is not marriage. Now you must know, like I said, with my wife, we called for one year, nine months. Very short few days. I made it clear, I made it clear to her, in this relationship, the standard and the boundaries are set by godly fears. These are things we are not going to do in this marriage, in this courtship. These are things we are going to do in line with the word of God. We agree on principles. We agree on things we don't do. Because there is no point trying to mess up what you are going to do in the future today. Build values. Listen to messages together. Pray together. Read books about marriage. Buy book. Buy for your wife to be. Let her read that book. You also read your own. And both of you come and share your understanding. Marriage is not a destination. It's a journey. It's a long journey with many bus stops. And you see, the more knowledgeable you are, the more stronger you are in the home. David married from a house. He said, the house of David was stronger and stronger. The house of Saul was stronger and stronger. So, in course, you sit down and talk. Talk about your family. What, how many children do you want to have? Do Find out the blood test of your the other person that you are going to marry. Do blood test. Because sometimes the person you are going out with, you want to marry, she is the same genotype with you. She is AS, you too, you are AS. These are things foolishness will not allow people to do. In the name of I love you, I love you, I love you. Now find out what is your group, what is your blood group, what is your genotype. Then you go and do blood test. Because if that lady is AS, you you to your AS, you are going to give back to sickle cell children. You are going to give back to children that have AS and SS. And you see, SS means seriously sick. It's a sickle cell, sickle cell sickness. I call AA always alive. Now, this is how you know that God guided you in that relationship. Now, when I did blood tests, my wife did blood test. we were the same blood group. We are the same genotype. I belong to a, a group O blood. My genotype is AA. Our own two is group O, genotype AA. Those are things you are going to be using to check, to check the direction you got for this relationship. Whether it's correct. Let God guide you. These eyes cannot see. This one can only look. He cannot see anything. These eyes can see 10 years to come. These eyes can see 20 years to come. When God is guiding you, He's guiding you because of what is ahead of you. 30 years down the line. 40 years down the line. That's why we pray, Lord, guide us. That's why we close our eyes because this one cannot see. Some, some, 
Some families you enter into, there are war fighting that family. Anyone that gets married there, there are demonic powers that want to destroy that family. If God sent you there, God will keep you there. So please, that's what courtship is meant for. Because why? You must honor God in your courtship. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Verse 4. Marriage is honorable, the bed on the fight. Marriage is honorable, the bed on the fight. The moment you start having sex before marriage, I can assure you, honor walk out of the window. You will never taste honor in that marriage. That's why people get married and beat each other to stupor like wrestlers. Naked each other. I, I warn the people I always pass to, I warn them. Don't go to the marriage committee. They go to normal uh, marriage counseling. Nobody in this church must be pregnant before marriage. I cannot marry three people together. It doesn't mean I will marry you, your wife, yourself, and the baby. That's three. Bible says two shall become one. This is three. And I've won many people by a pastor. If you cross that line with me, you will see on that side of me you have never seen before. And I've dealt with so many people like that. Some of them went to go and use urine of their of their of their husband, of their of their fiancé to go for a medical test. So they brought out urine negative, negative. And not only they messed up, before you know it, they are, she's pregnant. And they want me to wear them. I told them I don't do things like that. I'm not, my pastoral ship doesn't work that way. Two shall become one, not three. Mm -mm. I don't wear such things. We call it, we will do what is called marriage blessing for you, not, not wedding, no. So they wanted me to announce it, I didn't announce it. They got angry, they left church, that wasn't concerning me. What I'm doing is truth. Later they came back to realize it. Another couple, they deceived the marriage committee. <laughs> they came, they did the wedding, people gather, <laughs> they told lie to us, they lied to marriage committee, they lied to me too. <laughs> uh, I say it's before God we are wedding, I lay hands on them. <laughs> it was in their reception. Something just broke down in that reception. I don't know what came between both of them. While they are doing reception the same day, they began to argue with each other there. On the table there. On the table. The guy just removed the wedding ring and threw it at her. You are a useless girl. That is, on the same day of wedding, you know, because they were lying to me, God, God dealt with them. It was shame. She wanted to beat the girl there on the day of wedding. Day of wedding. I'm talking now. <laughs> Later, I got to know they were lying to the marriage committee. He messed up. He had to go and beg. When I mean beg, he came to my office and beg that he, he wasn't truthful with the marriage committee. They messed up because they were just fighting each other every day. I told him, I said, it's not me you lie to, you lie to God. So go and lie down on that altar there and beg God. It's not me you lie to. You think you are lying to me? God is the witness between marriage, it's not me. Go and meet God. He was there for money tonight. Ask God for mercy. And God is a God of mercy and God forgive him. After that time, everything changed in their marriage. That was it's never late. It's never late. We may have made mistakes. It's never late to go back to God and say, Lord, I did not know what I did was not right. But, but it's have to be to both parties. And they made a man today, they are doing well. And there are so many relationships like that because they have had children, I told them, well, I cannot marry a baby. I can't marry big stomach like this. And they do a lot of that rubbish. So many parts, so many Pope in Catholic do it. You can see the lady with big stomach and uh, the man, the three of them, they are doing wedding. <laughs> God is not in that wedding. I told that man, I said, if I knew that God did not come for that wedding, I would not join both of you. It's not every marriage that God is involved. 
It's not every marriage that God joins. You have to invite God into it. So these are the things I want to tell us in, in course. You don't mess around. If you mess around, it will affect honor. Honor will just get out of the marriage. The honor in marriage will go. The honor in marriage will go. And I had my own testimony, in my own time with my wife. I took her to go and show my parents. I took her on a journey. It was hard to travel. Because she's in the northern part, I'm in the, my parents are in Lagos. We travel for two days to go and show my parents. I go to my house, our house. She has her own room where she had to sleep. I sleep in another room. And we're going back to the place where we all came from. And I, we got to a place where it became very late in the night. We can't go ahead. I don't want to travel in the night because of activity of arm robbers. So we had to rent a note. I don't have money to buy to pay for two rooms. <laughs> now we are stuck in one room together now. And I've never in my life slept by the side of a woman in my life. Because in my family we are eight boys. So there's no girl. I don't even know what the girl look like. So I only see them on the street. So we I go to that hotel, I say, God help me today. <laughs> you know. Because I've never slept, God, the vow, we have made a vow that this must not happen. This way is very good to put the boundary in place. So, she went to take her bath, she went to go and sleep. I just, there was no place to sleep, I can't sleep on the floor. I slept by her side like a conga fish like that. I just stretched like a, I stretched like a, like a, like a book. That's how I slept. Woke up, Quietly, she wanted to take her bath. I waited. She came out. I took my bath. We traveled back. I want to hand that over to her parents. Now, as at the time I'm talking to you right now, I paid dowry from the place where she's coming from. I already paid her bad price, everything. The parents told me she's now your wife. You can take her. I said, Yes, she's my wife. But until we are prayed for in church, she's not yet my wife yet. Let her be at home. I paid brother price. All the things that I need to pay for, I paid. And see what happened. When I go back to the place I am staying, I was worshipping the Lord in the morning. Lord, thank you for our journey. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6. Acknowledge God in all your ways. And the Lord said to me, I have seen that you have honored me. And because you honor me, Everything you need for this wedding, I'll provide it. He said, I was watching all your journey, whether you will break your vow. You did not break it. Then the Lord said, if you see God, you can ask him. He said to me, you have honored me. And I'm going to make provision for everything concerning your wedding. And I got to church that day, so it's Sunday morning. I was a deacon in the church. I sat down, worshiping the Lord. Somebody just tapped me on my back. He said, excuse me, please. Your wedding is in the next few months. I said, yes. He said, the Lord asked me to ask you to give me the list of everything you wanted. I'm going to give you the money for it. I broke down in tears. I broke down in tears. What God just said to me just an hour ago. He just told me, give me the list of everything you need for your marriage. God has asked me to pay for it. People gave me, the people that are calling me, what do you need for your wedding? This one coming, what do you need for your wedding? According to the word of the Lord. People gave me, card gave me, the, the reception, the, the hotel we stayed the first night. That hotel, nobody has slept there. It's a brand new building. It was just to be dedicated. The man said, please, I want to be honored that you will be the first couple that will stay in my hotel. Honor everywhere. Honor everywhere. According to the word of the Lord. Let God honor you. <laughs> Marriage is honorable. The bed on the file. 
The moment you start defiling bed, I tell you, God has walked 10, 1,000 kilometers away. You won't see honor in that marriage. What I'm saying to you right now, if you see God, you can ask him. Many people don't know what they call marriage. That's what I'm saying to you. It's never late. If you are not yet married, I want to beg you. Listen to this teaching very, very well. And this teaching I'm doing, I'm still going to be able to put it on different platforms where people can hear and hear the truth. It's never late to do what is right. If you are not doing it right, you and your, your, your other partner can sit down and hear this message and put yourself right before God and say, Lord, we are sorry. We want to do things right. The eyes I can do for you, they do church blessing, church blessing for you, pray for you, and you live by the principle of God's word. And you will see how God will break forth in your life. So, this is what I want to make sure that we understand about courtship. Why am I saying this? I have discovered that if you go to marriage and you have messed up yourself, it attracts judgment. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, 3 to 7. Am I communicating? Yes. Because there's a lot of quietness on this line. Yes. Everybody seems to be very quiet on this line. Because all the amens, amens, are normally here, I'm not yarning them. Amen. Thank you for encouraging me. Ephesians 5, 5 verse 3. Fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, let not it be named among you as 1546. Ephesians 5 verse 3. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coerced jesting, which is not filthy, but rather giving thanks. For, for, for this, you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, so an idolater, as an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God is come upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do you not be a partaker with them? Amen. So, it attracts judgment. You see that? It attracts judgment. When you live right in your relationship, when you honor God in your marriage, God will honor your home. God will honor your togetherness. And so, when you do things in a proper way, when you follow His ways, God will always put His hand on your relationship when you follow His ways. You know what I'm saying so? Is that many people started their marriage on wrong foundation. Many people started their marriage on wrong foundation. And it's time to put it right. And that's why they're having problems. Proverbs and Psalm 11 verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Is everybody hearing me? Yes, yes. Yes. Psalm 11 verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? Foundation matters a lot. Foundation, God foundation. Purity foundation. Knowledge foundation. Boundaries foundation. And why am I saying that is that many people are not married but they are not single. Many people, they are not married but they are not single. I come again. Many people, they are not married, but they are not single. As people that want to wed, or that want to find a, a partner in life. John chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. You saw the woman at the, at the well. You just met the woman at the well. John chapter 4, verse 16. Jesus said here, John 4, verse 16 and 17. 
Bible says, the woman at the well. Jesus said to the woman, go and call your husband and come here. The, and the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are well said, I have no husband. For you have five husbands. And the one whom now you have is not your husband. And that you spoke truly. Jesus told that lady, John chapter 4, 16 to 18. He said, go and call your husband for me. He said, I have, I have a, the woman said, go and say, they say, I have no husband. Jesus said, no, you are five husbands. You know what that means? He said, the one that you are with is not even your husband now. What happened? Those five men, they are slept with her. And the spirit of those men have not left her. When you sleep with a man that's not married to you, or a man that's not married to you sleep with you, whether it is same sex or heterosex, whether you sleep with somebody that is not supposed to be, or you sleep with a, what happened is that something is taken from you. Every time you do those things, something from that person comes into you. Something from you is taken to that person. Your dignity, your honor, who you will become tomorrow, is collected at that spot. You know why I say so? Judah slept with Tamar in the Bible, which is the daughter, which is the son, which is the wife of his son. And the Bible says about Judah, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh come. That's Genesis 49, almost verse 10. That family, they are meant to raise the king in Israel. But because of what Judah did to go and sleep with the wrong person, he lost the scepter of the king of Israel to the, to the tenth generation. Nobody became a king in that, in that lineage. The first person that became a king in that lineage is David. Judah is meant to produce kings. Genesis 49 verse 10. According to the prophecy of that family. But because of what he did, he lost the scepter of kingship. That's what Judah was saying to that lady. You are five husband. What does that mean? When people look at you, you are five layers of men on you. So until those layers are taken off your life through purity and consecration, you are married, but you are not single. That's why some people, if you have not cleaned up yourself from all those things you have done in time past, there's nobody you will go to relationship with. You never, you will never settle with them. No matter who you marry, whether you marry anybody, who, that marriage does not have a future. Mark it down. You will never settle because the spirit of that person, the spirit of so and so you slept with, the spirit of that person is still on your body. Because people don't know that intercourse is not just a, um, a physical activity. It's also a spiritual activity. It's a spiritual transaction. Don't go and give your destiny to somebody else. Don't lose your head. So that lady has five husbands. That's why you have to consecrate yourself. Get all those spirits off you. The hands of people on you, all the people that you have had things with, their spirit must depart from you. Or else, you can never find a godly partner. So that is my talk there on courtship. Now the third one I'll talk about, the third lesson is 
Satan's interest in marriage. Lesson three. Satan's interest in marriage. Satan's interest in marriage. God is interested in marriage. It's God's idea. And I can tell you, anything that God is interested in, Satan is equally interested in it. Marriage is God's idea. It's not the idea of man. And because it's something that was from the heart of God, Satan wants to fight it because marriage is one of the strongest force of dominion on the earth. The Tanome 32 was starting. Was Tanome 32 was starting. Verse 13. Two shall put to flight 1,000. 10,000. One shall put to flight 1,000. Two shall put to flight 10,000. When you are not married, you are 1,000. When you marry in agreement with your wife, your dominion increased to 10,000 capacity. The devil is afraid of that. You don't know me, 32. Verse 30. He said, One shall put to flood 1,000. He said, Two shall, shall put to flood 10,000. So, your dominion capacity goes to 10,000. The devil does not like that. Marriage is one place where the dominion of God is established on the earth. That is why when God blessed them in Genesis chapter 2, verse Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. After the wedding, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. After the wedding. As the both of them were naked and they were not ashamed. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. The first person that visited them. During the first guest they have for their wedding reception. Genesis 3 verse 1. That was the first guest. The first person to say, Happy marriage, I brought my gift for you, both of you. It will look at the guy that comes to see them. Genesis 3 verse 1. After the wedding. He said, He said, uh, Now serpent was more cunning than any other beast of the field. Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, As God said, Shall not eat out of the tree of the garden. The first person that visited them was the devil. You can see what the visitor. After their wedding, the first person that brought the gift and say I brought flower from Asda for you and my card to say happy marriage life. It was the devil. Satan has interest in marriage because he wants to destroy the dominion power that you have there. You know why? Your dominion in marriage is in your agreement. Show me a home where the man and the woman always agree. I show you a marriage that will work in marital dominion. And what's the greatest battle today is the battle of agreement. This agreement is the greatest plague. Satan always planned between couples. They will argue and argue and argue. It's like argument that are going to get what come for it. 
they never agree on things. That the moment both of you does not agree on things, what happened? Your dominion power is broken. Agreement is more than prayer. You can't pray together. A home where there's always conflict. All the time, tension, all the time. That house, God's blessing will not stay there. What do I mean? Do you keep a treasure under a leaking roof? Because you can be in a house and not be in a home. It's the agreement between husband and wife that make a house a home. That's why husband and wife must always believe God to work in agreement. Satan will plant this agreement between both of you. Argument all the time. Fight all the time. You don't agree with anything. Satan, will, that's the enemy's work there. Because the moment you are divided, house cannot stand. Many relationships, they are plagued what I call division of tongues. The devil planted there. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Verse 9. It said, Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongue, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Any marriage where there is always division, you will see the following things. Violence and strife all the time. The moment a husband and wife agrees with each other, you close the door to violence and strife in your marriage. These are the things set and plant in many marriages that won't allow that home to know the meaning of peace. When the wife is saying A, the man is understanding D. When the man says B, she's understanding X. Satan coming between them to misinterpret each other. That is why God has to be involved. If God is not involved in your marriage, Satan will be involved there. Nature abhors vacuum. That's why the Bible says it is that thing that brings the spirit of asunder. What God has joined together, let no man, let no man put asunder. There is no divorce without the third party. The spirit of asunder enters into many marriages. Through a third party. What God has joined, let no man, let no man, let no man. When you see wife, husband fighting all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, find out. There's, there are influence from outside. All the time, fight. She speak English, you are speaking French. The spirit of asunder is at work in that marriage. There will always be strife and violence. A home where there's no agreement, there can never be peace in that marriage. They will argue about the toothpaste. Why did you pray the toothpaste in the middle? He said, ah, I can't pray the toothpaste the way I want. He said, no. Why did you pray toothpaste in the middle? 
the fat one that one okay about bread why did you remove the one on the top why do you take the one in the middle they will fight over everything okay they cook why did you cook in the morning you will have boiled water first fight over you know what is what is wrong of you satan and his mother-in-law are speaking stand around your marriage strife and when the woman talk 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 to one point the the mouth you know let me tell you one thing women they are more better in talking than men women can talk more than men men can't talk much we are not designed that way <laughs> that is why you see the men beat all the women because the amount of women or women they talk better than than men men does not know how to talk as fast as women that's where a man can win argument women always win and men cannot stand it so <laughs> why why is talking bra 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 is whining the hand of the man but i whine and whine before you know you are because the man cannot meet up the speed so men are not designed for argument they don't function that way that's why when a man is angry the man will be quiet when a woman is angry the man the woman will talk how to know an angry woman is the way they talk when a man is angry a man will keep quiet and these are the things a girl or a lady needs to know about a man before you get married go and buy books and read the psychology of a man a man uses the uh the the brain of man we call it left brain the brain of woman is a right brain that brain of women is a feeling brain. They interpret it through their feelings. Why men interpret it through logic? When a man is angry, he keeps quiet. Why is he quiet? He's thinking. He's thinking what to say. He's thinking what nothing to do. So you as a person that want to marry, go and read about the psychology of a woman. Women are not like men. The way God made men, God make man from the ground direct. It's out of the man, God brought out the woman. So a man is formed, a woman is made. They are two separate things. Let me show you in the Bible. A man is not, that's why you see men, they are more of in their body. Mozu, six pack, everywhere. Mozu everywhere. The man is formed. The way a man think, men are always thinking about competition. Why ladies are always thinking about opera, uh, sopra film. You know, all the film they all the all this film they we are watching. Hey, a woman can follow a television program for one month, five months. Why a man is looking for NFL football? He's looking for soccer to watch. Genesis chapter uh, 2, verse um, from verse um, from verse 15. Okay, verse 7. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed the man. Formed man out of the dust of the ground. And bred into the breath of life. And man became a living soul. You see the word? The Lord God formed man. And when it came to Genesis chapter 2, 22. It said the rib. Then the rib that the Lord. The Lord God took from the man. He made into a woman. Look at those two scriptures. Note all this thing I'm telling you. So when I'm giving you an exam, don't be writing back for me, French. Oh. 
follow what I'm teaching you now. Genesis 2, 22. Women are made. He made and the, what taken out of the man, he made into a woman. Genesis 2, 7. The Lord formed the man out of the dust of the ground. So a man is formed. A woman is made. Did you see that in your Bible? Can I get a witness? Do you see all that in your Bible, everybody? Yes, Let, yes. All of you, hear me now. When I'm writing yes. exam for you now, that you won't say, Pastor, where did you see? Where did you? What did you mean by that? <laughs> Listen to me now. Oh, <laughs> a man is formed. A woman is made like made in China, yeah. <laughs> like made in Japan. The woman is God took extra time. The woman is God's last born. That's why when Adam saw the woman, he said, "Wow, man." And that is why they call it woman today. So a woman does not think the way a man thinks. A woman has left brain. A man has right brain. So when you now marry, that's why no man is complete. No woman is complete. When you marry properly, your husband is supposed to complete you. Your husband produced the logic of what is missing in your brain. Remember, when Adam um, slept, the Lord took the rib out of him. So, no man is complete. So, when you marry a man, you are completing that man. You are completing the missing part in that man. And that way you must be seeing yourself when you are doing relationship. You will not always see things the same way. For instance now, this is a recording device. If this is what you are looking at, and you read what is at the back, I am looking at what is in the front. When you read what is in the front, you are right. When that person read what is at the back, you are right. Both of us are right. The problem is that we are looking at it from different points. So where does maturity come in? Hear what your partner has said. Be humble enough to receive it. The way you get it is that a same position. You come here, let her go here. Now say, I see. I see. I see. So sometimes when your wife is telling you, don't do it, don't do something, she is seeing what you don't see. As a man, you must be humble enough to listen. Also a woman. When your husband is telling you that thing, don't do it. Listen to your husband. Listen to him. I'm going to talk about that's why a, a man must not marry somebody older than him. Or, or, or a woman must not marry Oh Lord, our time is gone, man. Okay. Oh Lord, I didn't know that time was gone like this. Okay, we have to stop now. Oh Lord. Wow. Now. Good, Pastor. We're going to do the bar too. <laughs> <laughs> that is why a man must not marry somebody that is older than him. I'll teach that in conflict potential. Always marry somebody that you are that is younger than you in age. If a girl or a man you are 30, you marry a woman that is 40. You are marry your mother. <laughs> So, 
I'll teach on that in in conflict potential. <laughs> so don't tell me, Pastor, you know, I'm in love. I just love this sugar mommy. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> you soon become you soon become sugar sugar boy. <laughs> You soon become the sugar body we send to the market. So that's why a man must not marry somebody, marry somebody that is you are older than in age. At least four years apart. And a, a woman don't marry a baby. Amen. Uh, so I'll talk about that. I'm talking about conflict potential. <laughs> Right for some people, if they want to marry, you can tell that this marriage is not going to go far more than one kilometer before it happens, before the tire will puncture. From the what? some some people, when they say they want to marry, I can tell that their marriage will not go beyond one kilometer. <laughs> because from what I can see from statistics, that is why before you get married, you need to settle down. It is not for boys. I rest my case here. I will continue the next class. <laughs> Oh my God! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I've taught you three lessons today. Number one, what is marriage? Number two, mar a, a, a premarital stage. Number three, certain interest in marriage. In all my life of ministry of over thirty years or twenty-five years. I have never taught on the subject of marriage like I'm teaching right now. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I've never taught anybody like I'm teaching because we'll be 24 years in marriage this year. And I can tell you 24 years on 24 days. Congratulations. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. So, I, we, I have some very solid advice for anyone that have years to hear. And I can't, if you follow what I'm teaching you by the word of God, you cannot follow your marriage. It's not possible. If you follow God's word, so I will continue tomorrow with you guys. I didn't even know that time has gone. You guys, nobody tell me that time has gone. We want you to keep going. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Yes, please get these materials. I'm going to send it to you guys. As all of you, I'm talking to you and I'm talking through you. I'll send these teachings to you guys. Pass it on. Our younger people must listen to it. Anybody going to marry around you must settle down and listen. Nobody go to get a license in America or London without going through driving school. People should go through marriage school before they get married. So they can understand what marriage is about. So that the two people can sit down and talk and have very lengthy conversations. Then I can tell you when they start their journey it will be God will honor that relationship. As you honor him. Amen. God's method is never old school. Because God is new every day. Amen. Because this book. This book. Is the oldest book. With the latest news. Principles cannot fail. Feeling will fail. No principle. You build on principle. That is relationship built on the rock. The Lord bless you all. I love you all. Thank you, Pastor. So, we will continue tomorrow. I want to get the God notes. Bless you. God bless you. <laughs> I want to get up. I hope everybody got something tonight in the class. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Yes, Mama. Thank you. So, what time is Pastor? Eight, eight. Eight, ma'am. The same time, eight. I have any meeting tomorrow? We have... Oh 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 oh! Thank you. Our next class will be Monday, not tomorrow. Oh, okay. Thank you for reminding me that we have service. Oh Lord.
<laughs> Jesus help me now. That's why I say women have you have right brain. We will have left brain. So thank you. Thank you for using your, your right brain. <laughs> that is why you see the car. Car always have left mirror and side mirror and God is the witness in the middle when you are driving a car. God is the witness in central mirror, right mirror, left mirror. So that's why it's good to always ask your wife, what do you think about this? Both of you put your mind together. She will check it with the right mirror. You will check it with the left mirror. And when you drive with left mirror and side mirror, you can never make mistake like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like that. You can, eh? <laughs> What time? What time? Uh, well, tomorrow is Friday, sir. We're having... There's no Bible. There's no Bible school tomorrow until Monday. But church service tomorrow is seven p.m. I hate it because no tomorrow. Bible school. No, it's, that's why I say I forgot. I forgot. Okay. Ma, 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 Mama Jacqueline has corrected me with the right brain. That look, we have service tomorrow, and so so that is they will always see what you don't see. They always see what you don't see. That's why a woman and a man, when they are together, they unite. Oh my God. The devil is in trouble. Mm, the devil is in trouble. Aye. That's what the devil is afraid of. Satan is afraid of marriage. Hey, when you see a man and a woman, they agree, they pray together. Hey, we put that on his head. He don't finish. Oh, they are finished. Hey, hey when they pray, oh, it is bomb. <laughs> I'm when a man and a woman agree in God, Satan is doomed. <laughs> That's why he always creates fight between both of you to fight all the time. When you are fighting, say, hmm, hey, hey, fight. <laughs> he wants you to fight because he knows that your fighting gives him room to operate. So when your husband is talking, you don't want to get angry. You are trying to be patient. You are not stupid. You know what you are doing. No one to give the devil a chance in your home. Yeah. But they say one, you say ten. Before the man say you are saying B C W W O. Before you say the man say one, you say two, three, four, five, five, five. Ah, trouble is coming. Trouble is on the way. Say, the devil that wants to trouble you doing press up. <laughs> so that is it. So God bless you. Have a wonderful class. Have a blessed time. Bye bye. Yeah. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for everybody. Bless everybody in this class. Let one rest over them. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bye-bye. So you see you. Your class is on Monday. Monday, 8, 8 p.m. on Monday. We have a test for the last class. The last class, the, yes. it will be sent. Okay. It will be sent. Yeah, that one will be sent. All right. It will be sent, okay. yes. Well, so, you, all of you, for the class, is on Monday. We all meet for service tomorrow by 7. God bless you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You're welcome. I was school. I was in class. I was this.